Hello everyone and welcome back to this brand new video. Now today we're playing 4 color control in Mythic. But before we actually get into this deck, I did not get this idea alone. I got this idea from Alexander Gordon Brown. He, he was playing in the player store and I saw him playing one game and I was really interested in this deck and I wanted to test it out. But whether or not he invented the archetype on his own, I'm really not sure. So if I'm stealing credit from someone, please do let me know in the comments down below since it's not something that I'm trying to do. Uh, and with that out of the way, let's get into the deck. It's not exactly Alexander's uh, deck because I changed some things in the main board and I changed some things in the sideboard. So if you want to see his exact deck list, you can check it in my previous video where I explained all of the, the decks that I liked from the player store. And with that out of the way, let's get directly into the deck. Now we have Yorian as our companion. Now what's the reason we're playing four colors? I mean, the huge payoff from playing four colors is the ability to play Thought Erasure and Grow Spiral. Two of the cards that are currently shaping the meta and Duvin's Veto. I mean, yes, sure, we're running a bunch of cool things. But what's my favorite card to splash for? It's the Mythos. Mythos is simply insane. It's three mana, destroy anything. And the fact that you have this kind of flexibility in the main board really puts you ahead of a lot of control decks. For example, against Ban Tramp, you just have this ability to destroy their Nissa, their Tamyu, anything you just want to destroy except for lands. Obviously, you can just destroy with this Mythos. And that's a huge reason to splash, in my opinion. And it's been working very well. So we're also a ram deck, that means we're running Uro and we're running Nissa because we kind of want a payoff for like all of our ramp, we play Hydroid Crisis. So that's it for our ramp package. And a lot of people think that this is just Bant ramp and then uh, Sota ramp mashed into each other and you can you can think of that deck that way, but I mean it's it's all, it's also a different deck on its own. So Aethergust is one copy in the main board just because I'm expecting a lot of reclamation after player store. Heartless Act is kind of to deal with any aggressive matchups, Wilt is exactly uh, for the same reason, it's because uh, Teamer Reclamation is obviously going to be on the ladder more after the player store. And it's also good against Cat Oven, so that's that. Dovin's Veto stops Expansion Explosion from killing us, and that's the main thing you want to go for in this uh, meta. Now, why am I playing Extinction Event instead of Shatter the Sky? I want Extinction Event for the main reason that it exiles Uro, and I don't want Uro to just get removed. I don't want to Shatter the Sky opponent draws a card and then opponent untaps, replays his Uru and then draws another card. That's not simply something I want to encourage. As that conquers, that is very good when paired with our Yorian and that's why I'm playing it. And Shark Typhoon is just simply a way for us to kind of kill Teferi or like anything that's problematic in case we need to. But trust me, Teferi doesn't really bother us in this deck because we don't really run a lot of instant speed interaction besides uh, the V2 and then the Wilt. I mean, we can cast all of these as sorcery speed, we're not that bothered. Now going into our sideboard, two Aether Ghosts kind of to hit any aggressive deck or like maybe Reclamation because this card is very good against them. Legion's End is I think against Cycling, this is not my choice, this is Alexander's choice and I, I kind of see where he's going with this, maybe it hits the Fox from Cycling. It hits all of the Cycling uh, creatures, so if you're playing against a lot of Cycling you could consider this card. Wilt is again good against Reclamation and against Cat Oven. Dovin's Veto is just good against any matchup where you think they're trying to resolve a huge spell and you're trying to stop it. Kaya is good against graveyard decks, especially cycling and jump sacrifice because you gain life and at the same time you deal with their with their graveyard. Oath of Kaya is here against mono red matchups because not only does it kill a threat, it also gains you life. And casualties of war, of war is just here against these very grindy decks. And in case you're both like trying to get into the late game, just resolving one of these is enough for you to kind of uh, get ahead because this can be a four for one. Like I only did this. For the full value once but that was like a very good uh, time in my life but usually it's either a three for one or a four for one most of the time so that's going to be pretty much it for the deck if you want me to cover anything else do join our discord server it's going to be in the description down below and i'd love to explain to you any of the choices and before we get into our games i would like to please ask you to subscribe because it helps the channel a lot and with that i'll see you in the games going into our first game of four color control i'm excited to see how this deck is going to perform this is obviously not a hand you would want to keep just because you don't have access to many colors and you don't have access to many things in your hand. I think this hand is decent. I think we just bought on the Nissa. Just because Nissa, Nissa is a very good spell, I'm not gonna lie, but I mean, she's not doing anything currently and we don't even have anything remotely close to 5 mana. So I think we can safely just bottom that. <sighs> Let's see, opponent is considering whether or not to mulligan, opponent keeps. And uh, we're just going to bottom our Nissa. Play our land and then just pass. And then if we don't hit a land next turn, I, I will cycle track Typhoon for zero to ensure that we get a land drop. Alright, so favorite passage. Is opponent playing Reclamation? I sure hope so. 
Just because our matchup against Reclamation is simply so good. And the favorite passage kind of tells me that he might be, or he could just be John Sacrifice. And then they usually run one or two favorite. Alright, this is sure for sure not John Sacrifice, sadly. And I think this is simply just an annoying Reclamation matchup. Alright. Alright, this is not Reclamation. Is this Azorius Control? This is looking like it might be Azorius Control. And I think because this is looking like it's Azorius Control, I keep the mana for dealing with the fairy in the future. Let's just Uro for now. If he slams his Teferi down, I think I'm fine. Because I get to slam down my own Teferi and then we just start playing Hearthstone. Why not just play Hearthstone? It's a fun game. Uh, and why am I saying we play Hearthstone? In Hearthstone, both players play on their turn. They don't have instant or sorceries and that's exactly what a Teferi Stenmate does in this game. We both play Hearthstone. I think we're advantage against Asorius Control just because of the disruption that we get to play and because we ramp much faster than they do. So I think we're like kind of favorite in this matchup. All right. Um, I think we just play Land Pass, Shock Land Pass, and then we can get the Shark Typhoon and stuff. And we get another Shark Typhoon, which is actually, actually something I'm very happy about. Shark Typhoon fills up our graveyard, gives us a threat. And pressure is the fairy when we can't do anything about him. Alright, Spectral Sailor. We're playing Azorius Flash. I've never seen Azorius Flash, so if he is, I really don't know what to play around. He has now the mana to activate it to draw cards. Let's just uh, have you say hello to my little friend. He is a little shark type because he's simply just a 3 3. Brazen Barber would be annoying because it bounces this, and then if he has. If he also has. Uh, what was it? If he also has Dispute. Dispute is also annoying because it kills our uh, the fairy. But I mean, do we take risks at this stage? I don't think I'm forced to take any risks. I mean, just thought erasure fixes the whole problem. We get to see his hand before making any decisions. All right. So thought erasure opponent, what do you have? Opponent, what do you have? Opponent, show me what you have. Is this a quench? Please be a quench. If he has the double dispute, I'm gonna be furious. Alright, so opponent, go for your turn, do what you can do. He's actually banned Flash. So Night Black Ambusher could be an option for the future. Alright, I and mean, that's fine with me, because we get to play our Triome, we get to play our Teferi, and then we get to plus Teferi and force him to do something about it. And then now I have the extension event to just kind of uh, board up at instant speed in case I'm forced to do that. Alright, opponent, here you go. Can you deal with this Teferi? Can you deal with this fairy? That's the question. You could just bounce it with Brazen Borrower, but I mean... Don't make another if, that, if that was the case, I think I'm fine with this whole sequence of play. Alright, so... I think we just plus once again. Do we just plus once again? That's the question. If I bounce... I think if you just bounce, because I don't want him to keep sitting down on just Sailor for mana activate, Sailor for mana activate. I think we just bounce. Alright, he doesn't activate it, so that seems like this is a Shark Typhoon turn. This is definitely looking like a Shark Typhoon turn. Alright, so we just play our Triumph. We, he can play a 1, 2, 3 Shark Typhoon. We have a way bigger Shark Typhoon. I think I'm fine with this whole turn of events if this is a Shark Typhoon. Because we have our Teferi to make sure that he can't interact with it at instant speed. And what like what else could he play currently at this stage? There, there's literally nothing else. He just can play Shark Typhoon. Alright. So a 3-3 Shark Typhoon is going to be met next turn with a 4-4 Shark Typhoon and that usually 4 is bigger than 3 if I'm not wrong. The opponent, do you try to attack down the Teferi? That's going to be very cute when you're going to be met with my other little friend. See, so you bounce his brother and he's mad. Because he's mad, he's going to pay you a small visit. So, you're trying to kill our Teferi? I don't think the Teferi is going to die. Teferi is protected by sharks everywhere. So is this looking like an ambusher turn? Alright, I think I'm fine with ambusher really. I can just get the extinction event, kill it. Alright, thought erasure instant speed. That's also something, but do I want I think I want to escape Uro at this stage, so I think we don't uh, I think we thought erasure now this turn. Um I think we have green green blue blue. I think I'm missing a bunch of blue sources, so let's get additional one. Let's just, let's just get green. And then I get the Thought Erasure. See what's the plan for my opponent's side. He has two more ambushers. He has two more ambushers. Two more ambushers. 
Let me just take the gust because I don't want to redo the whole Oro train. And I think Nissa off the top is good. And I think we just play Oro. So exile five cards, and now even if opponent is gonna keep on creating some tokens with the Amateur, I think I can just go for next turn uh, extinction event for even. That does kill my Shark Tycoon token, so maybe I do it post combat. Besides that, I think we're in a good spot, and I just put Yorian into our hand. Might as well since we don't have anything to do anyways. Alright, so boss, and then this Teferi is simply gonna answer a lot of the things that opponent is trying to do. So if he plays another ambush, I'm very happy just because extinction event uh, even kills all of his uh, ambusher dreams. Alright, so Sailor is not that annoying now because I also get to draw an additional card per turn. So we're gonna extinction event for even opponent. I mean, I wouldn't draw with Sailor on the stack because I'm obviously not gonna choose uh, choose odd opponent. There's no reason for me to choose odd. Alright, so we're gonna choose even, get rid of these tokens. And now we can attack with Uro. I mean, we can't protect the fairy anyway, so might as well attack and get some value out of this. So draw, draw two curses. Curses would be a good draw. Does he chump? I think it's a bit too soon to start chumping. We play the sand tab, it's okay with me. We could have played Nissa first, but I think I want to conceal information first. I should have played Nissa probably first. Uh, play this land tab and then plus untap this land and then just pass. Yes, there was no reason for me not to play myself, but I'm just stupid and I did not want this. Alright. Now, next turn is looking quite well. Just let's hope we. I don't think there's anything that can kill us at this stage. I don't think anything really bothers me. He's forced to block with something with the sailor, except if he plays the ambushers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, you can play, you can't play double ambusher, you can play ambusher borrower, and that still means that he has to block with something, and then I have, if I attacked with Nissa last turn, I would have had lethal now, but I mean, his plays are his plays. Uh, what could get me out of this, I mean, I think we're still gonna win, but what could get me out of this, that's the question. Um, let's see, let's see, let's consider options, Aether Ghost would be good, any removal spell off the top would be good. Besides that, not a lot of things. Opponent, do you play your borrower or not? Opponent decides that he wants to play his borrower, although it doesn't block anything. And I think that just gives us the game because I can bounce with the fairy. So the fairy bounce the ambusher. Alright. Um, I think we omen of the sea just to try to set up for the win because removal spell means he's dead. Um, don't need any of these, so we just bought them. Yes, I could have kept the shark typhoon, but I'm trying to set up lethal. Uh, Yorian is cool, and I think we just reanimate first. Let's just make this island into an attacker. I think I'm gonna scry just to set up the Uro to draw because if on the stack I can remove something that's good. I think Hydro Places is simply enough to end the game, so we're just gonna keep that. Attack for a bunch. Yes, we're gonna cheat in a bunch of lands now just because we have our Places in our hand. So opponent, how do you block? Flash could be very annoying, I'm not gonna lie because we are technically a control deck and control decks don't do well against flash decks depending on the draw. I don't know why opponent blocked that way, but I think we just gave up on the matchup. Uh, Aether Gust is good, and I think Wilt is bad, simply like very bad. Aether Gust doesn't hit a lot of things, so I'm not gonna play the full uh, 3 copies. Besides that, Elspeth Conquers that is a bit too slow in my opinion. Vito could be good for us to make sure that something resolves. And I think that's how we sideboard. Maybe Oath of Gaia to just hit off. But Oath of Gaia hits only the Sailor and the Borrower. Alright, so we might have a bad kind of experience now, but the access to a lot of... Uh, the access to a lot of instant speed removal might fix our problems. And we simply just have the Teferi. So, let's see what happens. Let's literally see what happens. I think I believe in the power of this stack, but I mean... Opponent could always draw into dispute, uh, quench a lot of these annoying things that you can't always deal with. This is a very bad hand. Opponent mulligans. I think I can simply mulligan. I would have mulligan anyways. This is an even worse hand. Opponent, do you mulligan again? Mulligan. Mulligan. Oh, Alright, he doesn't mulligan. We just mulligan again. Um, tapped land. Tapped land is horrible, but I mean, what can I do? I think Aether Gust is not the best currently now, and I think Thought Erasure is not going to be amazing as well because. In two turns, opponent is gonna be playing most of the threats anyway, so like no reason for me to um, keep Thought Erasure for turn 3. 
Alright, so we're not in a good spot really. It's, uh, he doesn't have blue mana yet, so that, that I'm happy about. Alright, so he doesn't have a sailor and he doesn't have. Uh, he doesn't have a. I don't think there's anything he wants to bounce, so like uh, the thing about him not having borrower is fine. Maybe he doesn't have the speed just because he will not try to resolve it. He's going back for that or not in range. Alright, that's an, an annoying sequence of events because he has access to. Um, what was his name? The Ambusher next turn. If you don't draw a removal spell, an instant speed removal spell. Alright, we kind of have an instant speed removal spell now. And I'm simply just going to play, and play our Omen of the Sea now to make sure it resolves. Uh, Teferi Thought Erasure is a nice package. Do I want that package at this stage of the game? I think we do not. I think it's a bit too late for Thought Erasure, and I think it's a bit too late for Teferi. Although Teferi does shut down their whole. Uh, game plan, but I don't think I want to wait for that. Having two mythos is way better in my opinion because he's gonna try to resolve some things at my end step, and then I'll, then I can just mythos skill them, and I think that should be enough to get me back into this game. If he goes for ambush or end step, we just have the mythos to kill it, and then if he goes for anything else, we also can have the mythos to kill it. Yeah, we can kill a bunch of things. Really, this is looking like it's an ambusher turn, right, opponent? Show me, show me that ambusher. Opponent, I dare you to show me that. Alright, that's not an ambusher, that's a shark type one. It's not that annoying really because we get to resolve our own in a couple of turns and that we can use in the future to jump block. Opponent shocks in something. What do you have in mind, opponent? Is it a bigger shark typhoon next turn? And then he can play a 4 4 shark typhoon next turn, which is annoying to say the least. Alright, so we're gonna go into our turn and then we're gonna play our triumph that. Yeah, I think we play our Trion Tap just because we have the option to make a 2-2 Shark Typhoon and then block this. If he goes for commands, the end game is not something that I have in mind. Although I don't know why he wants to play that because Teferi can just bounce this. Yes, I did bought him 2 Teferis at this stage, 1 Teferi at this stage, but I mean, I don't think this is a good card you want in this matchup because Teferi can simply just bounce it. And I played probably 4 Teferis if I'm not wrong, yeah. So we're gonna Shark Typhoon now to force an answer. If the opponent does anything, I think I'm fine. And now we're just gonna block with our Shark Typhoon. Take 5. Black Total was never an issue for your control players. Control players need as much as possible to take their life total as a resource. Alright, I really hope he has another um, Commence the Endgame because now I get the Mythos both of them. He doesn't have another one sadly. So opponent is going to attack us down to 8, but that's not the biggest of my issues currently. Do we fo fo force a counter counter spell war? I think we do. So let's just try to mythos this. I'm gonna play with black just because I don't need to play with, with white black. Alright opponent, does that prompt an answer from your side? You have 1, 2, 3, you have a place of cards in your hand. If I Dovin's veto that, does that warrant something for my opponent? I mean, he taps out now. His reasoning might be that I can just jam in a Teferi and then ruin his life. And then I can also jam in... Yeah, Uru is not looking like something we can jam in in the near future. Alright, so this Pewt, my Mythos is fine with me. He tapped out and then he lost two cards from his hand. I did lose also two cards from my hand, but that's okay. Uh, we're gonna go down to 8, but then Uro can get us back. And then we have Shark Typhoon to just block in the worst case scenario that we do need that kind of interaction. But the ferry off the top would be insane currently, but we don't get that. I think I shuffle with passages to make sure that we hit our Teferi, and now we have five lands in our graveyard for Uro. Uh, what are we missing? What color? We're not missing any color, so I'm just gonna search for a white source for the future. Uh, we're gonna tap that way because it doesn't really matter. If the opponent, you really have a dispute now. You still have a dispute after all of this. I mean, um, do we want that? I think I'm fine with waiting a turn for Uro, just the Thought Erasure before doing anything. And then just Mythos this now, yeah I think I'm fine with that. Don't mind waiting a turn for Uro, especially if that means I can get to save some life total. Alright, when it passed you, what's the plan? I mean you can play his Uro I guess, no he still doesn't have, he has 5 cards, he needs 1 more card, so a passage would work. I mean he taps out, he's playing his own Teferi, yeah, we can slow down whatever you want, Teferi. I don't think I really mind you being on the field. I don't think he's really desperate for the answers. I'm not sure what he's desperate and what he's looking for, but... I mean, what plan is what plan? Alright. 
So if I thought Erasure now, I give him something to escape Uru with next turn. But I mean, if his whole turn is escaping Uru, I think I'm happy. Um, thought Erasure, do you resolve? Let's look at disputes. Alright, I can get countered. Or do I want to pay 3? Um, he played another previously a dispute. The odds of him having another dispute are a bit low. But I don't think I wanna... I don't think I wanna do anything really. I think I just decline. I just want to make sure that my Uro resolves. If he has a double dispute... I mean, sorry, but I can't play around everything. I mean, double dispute would be something I'm quite curious about. Do you really have double dispute? Aether Gust could be something. Did you really have double dispute? Out of all of the things that you could have had, double dispute was the thing that you had. Alright. I mean, that does ensure that our Teferi resolves and that Teferi bounces the stupid Uro. Unless, like, he's playing also Lazata Plating. Are you playing Lazata Plating opponent? I mean, or you just have your third dispute. I mean, why not? Or just a hard counter spell. Hard counter spell works. Alright, so he draws with an Uro. Yes, I am tilted, but it's okay. I think he did get a land, but he's just trying to fake not having a land. Might be a bad idea. Yes, Teferi, this might be a bad idea. And then we have we top deck a thought erasure to make sure that our Teferi resolves. Thank you, uh, Magic Gods. Thank you. Alright, opponent. Do you hard counter this thought erasure? Do you hard counter this thought erasure opponent? <sighs> Three disputes. I mean, Thought Erasure did its job. If he has a fourth dispute, I mean, I can't play around everything. Alright, opponent. Do you have your fourth dispute? Can we draw something to draw? So we bounce this Uro because I don't want him to keep on getting value, and that resets his uh, escape plan. And I think we can jam in our Evolved Shrine. And then put our Yorian into our hand. If he has Shark Typhoon, our Teferi is dead. But I mean. I mean, if he has a Shark Typhoon, I think he would have used it probably before to kind of start applying pressure, so I don't think he has it. Alright, it must have been a top deck from Oro, because I don't think opponent would have kept a Shark Typhoon this late in, the, in his hand. I don't think that's a smart thing to do. If he did, I mean, that's it. I don't know what he's playing no, around, really. Alright, the fairy is dead from our side, but I mean, the fact that opponent didn't counter anything we played last turn coming. tells me that the fairy is not something that's gonna do anything currently. Alright, so he's far away from escaping Oro, that's something I'm happy about. Sadly, opponent can just plus the fairy next turn and deal with our token that way. Crisis is a very good top deck, but I think I just pass and then Shark Typhoon end step. But I mean, he knows that I have a Shark Typhoon probably, because like, why would I not play anything at this stage in the game? Alright, back, I'm for sure it's fine. I mean, you can maybe try to block it with a, with a Shark Typhoon. That's an, I don't think he's gonna attack with this anyways because like why would he suicide his uh, right back ambusher can just sit down and not sit down and sit back not do anything and that just gets him the value he needs he attacks with it all right so he probably has a borrower in hand anyways so currently we have one two three four five six mana we can make a six six shark typhoon no reason for us to make it smaller because we can't do anything with our mana anyways. If he has a borrower, I think we're very behind, but we're trying to dig for a board wipe as well. A board wipe would be good for us. Because we deal with the ambusher and with his tokens. Did he not play around it? I don't think so. He did not play around uh, Shark Typhoon. Alright, then I'm fine with that interaction. Just Night Black Ambusher being that is okay with me. And then if he wants to bounce, he's gonna have to bounce the Shark Token, right? Alright, he bounces the Shark Token. So the fairy is also gone. Udo is not going to be escaped, and we're both down to not a lot of cards in our hand, but I have an active Krasis. Is he also playing Krasis is the question. If he is, I mean, I think he's simply just ahead in the Krasis game. Alright, Udo is okay, because now we just make a bigger Krasis, we can make a... Exactly a 6-6 six, six Krasis, yeah, we don't make a bigger Krasis now, do we? Um, we can make a crisis for 6, right? Yep, just play a 6-6 six, six crisis. Even if he has a dispute because he threw all of them, I'm okay. Alright, so we may be back into this game, hopefully. He stacks his favorite passage for no reason. Alright, opponent, what's the plan? Alright, is there a Shark Typhoon getting cycled? You can cycle a Shark Typhoon for one, exactly 6 as well. Yep. I mean, let's see what Heaven has to say for us. Cycling Shark Typhoon would be brutal because now Shark Typhoon is lethal. Another Night Black Ambusher is fine, as long as he doesn't have uh, a borrower. 
at the very least the same thing when she exactly does, so let's just go into game 3. Sorry this video is taking way too long, but I mean it's a flash matchup and flash matchups tend to usually go that long, I'm sorry. And maybe I should have considered playing around uh, the Shark Typhoon, but I mean if I did play around Shark Typhoon, uh, Uro would have just killed my own Teferi, so that's literally the same exact thing. So let's see, we're gonna play first. This hand is horrible, but it's decent. Yeah, how can it be horrible but decent at the same time? I think Omen could be enough for us to get back into things. And we have all of the colors that we would want, so I think I'm gonna keep even though this hand doesn't do a lot currently. I think just the fact that I can do so much with an Omen and the Mythos is uh, enough for me to kind of keep it. And we have perfect mana, so like mana is not gonna be something I'm gonna have to worry about for the future. So we're gonna shock in our breeding pool, and then we're just going to pass to opponent. If opponent wants to dispute an omen, I think I'm happy with that exchange. Alright, opponent can dispute an omen. Do you want to go for that opponent? Alright. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. I don't think I want lands, obviously. Lands, of course, of course, I bought them two lands and then I got a land. Why am I not surprised in this game anymore? They're not bought them two lands. Seems like I maybe would have I misclicked, but I mean I think it's fine we can cycle this and stuff in case opponent doesn't do anything. We have a bunch of options currently. It feels weird that opponent did cycle I don't think opponent cycled out the sailors because that would be a very bad move from his part. I think they're the best thing to play in this matchup because they force me to do something about them. And then if I don't do anything about them, opponent just wins the game that way. So if opponent cycled out his uh Spectre Sailors, I would be very ashamed to lose them. Like, very, very ashamed to lose them. Alright, so the fairies have been involved. If the opponent bounces on anything, we have Shark Typhoon to just kill him. Alright, opponent doesn't bounce anything. We're like gonna it. cycle our Triome. And we're gonna Mythos kill this Teferi. Do I have the mana to do that? We have... We have white. We sadly don't have white yet, so I think I'm gonna have to shock this in. So now we have white uh, being black, right? Yeah, we can do. So we can destroy this non land permanent, play with white block. Alright, and then we just pass. Now we have Heartless Act and Shark Typhoon up. That's good. So, opponent was the plan, he shocks and plays another good fairy. I mean, can't play around everything. <coughs> I think best plan would be to Shark Typhoon. Alright, opponent is desperate to make his land drop, he doesn't. I think I just play this land untapped, and then we just make a 3-3 Shark Typhoon, kill this Teferi. And then in case opponent plays a blocker now, we can just Heartless Act it. If, in case opponent has another Shark Typhoon, it's okay. Because we trade... I mean, trading is not something I'm looking forward to doing, but I mean... At least as it forces opponent to do nothing with his, with his entire turn, and I think late game, I think we're simply just ahead. Alright, so Shark Typhoon opponent, what's the plan? Do you bounce? I think this seems like a bounce with Borrower, right? Alright, yeah, this definitely seems like a bounce with Borrower. It's a sad life currently. It's a sad life when just a Teferi that resolves kind of hinders your whole game plan. Alright, opponent, can you bounce with Borrower already? He doesn't bounce with Borrower yet. He's kind of trying to give me a glimpse of hope, but I do not have it. Alright, just bounce with Borrower already, opponent. Can we please get to things? Can we please just bounce the borrower with the borrower? Alright, the opponent trades a Shark Typhoon, which is not something I'm that happy about, but it's better than me just getting bounced, uh, my token just getting bounced with a, a borrower and not doing anything with our, with our full turn last turn. Alright, that's a sad turn of events, but I mean it's fine. We're, I'm gonna cycle my Triumph now in case I hit a Mythos, we don't hit the Mythos. I think I Omen of the Sea tried to set up for the future turns. Uh, no lands is not something I need. Uh, of course we hit a land when we bottom two lands. Currently we have three lands bottom. I'm gonna keep this in case we flood. And I think we just play our water grave out and then we pass. Extinction event deals with a lot of threats from our opponent's part so I'm happy to keep it. Uro is fine because opponent tapped out so hopefully we get to resolve something serious next turn. If we do I think we're just set for the future. Alright. So what's the plan of one? Land would be annoying because that opens up night back ambusher. Please don't have an ambusher and the land opponent, please. Please don't do that. Like for the love of everything. Alright, so he taps he plays it tapped. But there's no ambusher coming our way. Let's try this. I'm happy about that. Nissa. 
Do I, I don't think I have anything to, I want to bait with Nessa, so we're not gonna try to play it now. Alright, so we thought Erasure, I think we keep thought Erasure for next turn. I think we're just going to Yorian. Put Yorian into our hand, play a land tap, and next turn we have Nessa and the bait for Nessa at the same time. So I think that's insane. I think that's a very good turn of events for us. Pokemon is gonna get to escape Uru if he has a favorite passage, he apparently doesn't. He could bounce his Teferi, good, get a fifth card. And then just play another one from his hand if he has it. Alright, he goes for that now. So he has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 cards. Uh, I get to exile his Uro, and then if he plays another threat, I also get to exile that. And that I'm pretty happy about. I can set up this whole thing with the Thought Erasure to make sure it happens in case of one has a dispute. I don't, I don't want to meet you again to play in this matchup, really. So, let's see what happens. Opponent has a... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, who has a full, alright, he doesn't have a full little hand anymore. Alright, the fairy time raveler is not really something I'm bothered by. You'll thank me later. No, I'm not gonna thank you later, the fairy, trust me. So, thought erasure. Let's see what, what's in his hands. Elspeth conquers that, Elspeth conquers that, the fairy. Alright, 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 alright. I think Teferi is simply not something I care about currently. I think we just take the Elspeth Conquer's death. Okay, and then just me knowing that he doesn't have a counter spell is good enough with me. Do we try to resolve Yorian or do we just... I think we Extinction Event now. Choose options. I think I'm gonna choose Odd to deal with Uro. And now opponent doesn't have an Uro. I have a Yorian uh, card engine going. And then I think we get to resolve Nissa, bounce, I mean kill the Teferi, that's good. We won't tell that the counter spell, I'm sorry, but I, like, I can't control everything with this game. Let's see, so we're gonna try to resolve our Nissa. I think that's the best thing we can do currently. Does Nissa resolve? Did you really top deck interaction opponent? Alright, you top deck interaction, that's good. Uh, we're gonna reanimate a non-forest because I don't want my forests to die. And now we're just going to attack this annoying Teferi. Please don't be top, please don't top like a shark typhoon. Please don't be a shark typhoon. Alright, no shark typhoon. No shark typhoon feels good. And now I'm just gonna play Yorian, uh, draw two cards. I could have uh, Yorian Elspeth conquers that, uh, but I don't think it's something I want to do. I think just opponent having so much cards in hand and me not having that many kind of war warns me to kind of start the card engine rolling for my side as well. So opponent's price top, I wonder what that is, but I don't think I care about any of that, because we have currently 7 power on the board, and then he has an Elspeth conquers that, that is probably going to take our Nissa anyways, but we can set up for the future using our 2 Omen of the Sea. Resolve, resolve. So let's see, what do we get? Of course I don't want lands, please game stop giving me lands. For the level, yes, Krasis off the top and then a backup Nissa. Alright, I'm feeling very good about our next couple of turns, especially that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 lands on the bottom. 6 lands on the bottom feels great. Aspect conquers that, what do you take? Nissa, please take Nissa. Nissa, yes, Nissa is gone. Opponent is probably gonna play the fairy bounce this land, or just bounce the Aspect conquers that, that's a smart choice in my opinion. Do you bounce the land or do you bounce no, the Espeth no, Conquer's that? What, what is it, opponent? What do you bounce? Opponent bounces the land. This. I would have bounced the Espeth Conquer's that, honestly. Is he gonna try faking a counter? He tries to fake a counter. Or, or he's just playing uh, Shark Typhoon. I think I'm gonna attack first just to try to bait out Shark Typhoon. Attack the Teferi. Is it a Shark Typhoon opponent? It seems like it's going to be one, right? Right? It's a borrower. I think I'm very happy with the borrower because now I just get the uh, Yorian and just replay a bunch of things. Can we Nissa and at the same turn Aspeth conquers that? I think we do. Yeah, we have the three mana and then we have three forests. Yeah, we definitely do get to do that. So we're gonna. Do we need to shock in anything? I mean, he doesn't have a dispute anyway, so I think I just Aspeth conquers that. And then I have one mana access, don't do anything with it. We're just gonna deal with our Elspeth Conquer's that. Then I have Yorian next turn. Alright, opponent, uh, your turn. I can just also plus uh, reanimate this Water Grave, kill the Fairy. And then end the turn. Yes, I, we attacked already because we wanted to bait out. Potentially, I was playing around uh, Shark Typhoon. 
As fast conquers that, my as fast conquers that, or my Nessa? Nessa is fine. Nessa is completely fine. You don't have to protect us, Nessa. You already did more than enough. Just forcing opponent to deal with two threats in one turn is enough with me. I hope opponent plays as borrower because we just get to heartless act it. Warren doesn't have a lot going for him, does he? He doesn't, doesn't he? No, I am not making this up as I Alright, so we're going to attack this Teferi down. Opponent, do you want to do anything about this Teferi surviving or do you not mind having it die? Alright, so Teferi is dead. If you get to resolve Yorin, I think the game is simply over. This is hardly my if you don't get to resolve it, then we set up Uro for the future turns. Alright, so we get to resolve our Yorian, that's something I'm happy about. Trigger on this, alright, it doesn't bounce. I thought maybe he bounces our as but fuck is that on the stack. Alright, alright, alright. I think we're simply just way too ahead in this game currently. Alright, so that's gonna be pretty much it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Let's see what position I'm in in Mythic currently. 99, and we're gonna try to grind into the top uh, 1500, don't worry. So that's gonna be pretty much it for the video. If you did enjoy, please do consider subscribing, it helps the channel a lot. If you have anything you want to discuss, uh, make sure to join our Discord server. I'm more than happy to help any of you. And with that, I'll see you guys next time.